Hello, everybody. So we are now at the last uh, sprint, the last finish, uh, the finish line, actually, for uh, EPI is New York. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the, the, the last two days about how we talk about industries and legacy industries and how APIs are actually making a big change for these industries. And also on the technical side, how to be sure that you remove your technical debt with right API design, right API lifecycle management, right API security and identity practice, and also the right uh, microservice architecture. So we will finish by three talks that I'm, re I'm really happy to have. Uh, the first one will be a talk about like uh, from Twitter about how do they serve the public discussion with, with API. Uh, the second one will be about the technology ethics, uh, right, to really finish uh, the discussion in, in uh, yeah, opening uh, on societal topics. And uh, last but not least, I will be finishing by sharing you my 10 predictions for the next 10 years in the API space. Uh, from all the conferences and all the discussion I have with vendors, companies, and developers and architects. And maybe some uh, some uh, uh, insider's information about uh, what's happening in the in the in, in, in the space. Uh, you will see. So now uh, we start with uh, Daniele Bernardi from Twitter. Hello, Daniele. Can you share your screen uh, with us? Hello. Hello. Hi, Mary. Yeah. How are you? Good. How are you? Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah, really doing well. We're really glad to have you with a really nice shirt, uh, with a beautiful heart close to the Twitter bird. And yeah, I will ask I will ask you to share your presentation, uh, share your screen, and so you can start your presentation for twenty five minutes. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much. See you. Hi everyone. So uh, Daniela here from uh, the developer relations at uh, Twitter, working mostly with the Twitter API. Um, you know, when I started to uh, build this uh, um, content and uh, uh, get to uh, know API days a little bit better, I thought that 2020 was going to be a year that would be kind of a, you know, uh, a year where we would pivot from uh, an API design that was largely the same and it's been the same for years to something that's more uh, oriented towards uh, health. And then health took, at, you know, Different turn, very literal, very literally so, um, to the point that you know we're all in this uh, together since a few months now, almost half of the year for some countries, and um, the United Nations said uh, it's tackling what it calls uh, an infodemic. So it's hard to distinguish information um, that's not attendable from uh, reasonable, and um, this kind of information it's uh, also hard to distinguish between you know what's not true and what's objective as well, what are facts, um, and what can contribute to the progress of uh, the public conversation on the, on the internet. Um, so, so far, this has been largely a manual process and uh, obviously presented scaling challenges. Uh, for example, you know, how do we go about understanding what's uh, truth uh, and facts uh, from what's uh, disinformation or something that's just simply not inaccurate so not accurate um how do we get the full data set on uh, the full resolution of that conversation it doesn't have to be let's say covid related but could be any other topic as well and how to direct people to the right information and how do we contrast and report uh, misleading and inaccurate details uh even before they can happen um, we see platforms, uh, like I said, trying to get to the root of the issue. For example, you know, we're trying to do this since 2018. Uh, this is a tweet from Jack uh, said um, that we, you know, made a commitment to increase the health of the public conversation. So the public conversation is the conversation we are having um, every day on the internet uh, with uh, others in uh, in public, just like you know, uh, platforms like ours uh, can support. Um, those are our thoughts, our way to express ourselves, uh, the way we receive and consume information. But what's interesting here is that uh, Jack doesn't just give the definition of uh, the public conversation. It gives a definition of health. Uh, so what's the health of the public conversation? So when we talk about health of the public conversation, uh, we refer to any activity that adds to your life in a positive way. Uh, so we go online to learn, to inform ourselves, uh, to connect with others to keep ourselves up, updated on uh, you know, the latest memes or TikTok dance moves. Uh, when we choose to make our collective interactions public, we shape a global conversation that can advance us as uh, a society. 
But when we look back at the actual implementation, you know, what API design can allow us to make that much progress? So how can we design an API so that it's health oriented to fulfill all these jobs? If we uh, look in the past, like I you know, said before, uh, this is a challenge that platforms uh, had in the past. It's not new. Like, you know, API platforms were designed to work with objects and the notion of that object stops at what an object is. Like you have the object type, usually in an ID. Um, APIs know where the object is. They know what the type of the object is. Obviously, they return the object's content, but they kind of act in a silo. They get very isolated from uh, the surrounding context. And there's no awareness of the surrounding context itself. Um, so in order to enab enable users and developers with tools for healthier conversations, we need to design APIs that are largely aware of their surrounding context. Right now, endpoints, like I said, don't say much about the context around them. We just have the object content. We have plenty of metadata. But then how do you infer that information around the context of uh, why the tweet was tweeted in the first place or why the conversation started? Uh, you know, the ability to frame that object into a much larger picture is always left out of an API product. And um, you know, even if even in our previous API design, uh, we we kind of are guilty of this. Here's an example. You know, suppose you wanted to get all the tweets sent on uh, Mother's Day. What would you do? You would probably you know search by keywords. Um, so you would do something like looking for specific texts and hashtags in order to get an initial set of tweets, then you will refine that search to find uh, uh, you know, things that might be collateral or side to that conversation as well, but maybe not so accurate. And then you have to deal with uh, leveraging the data sets to really uh, screen the tweets that are not relevant. Uh, so even so, you can understand that there are you know, issues here and there, glitches, uh, and that data set might end up being largely incomplete because the conversation can shift a lot in tone and context as well. And you know, just like it happened this year with a lot of mothers in, in the front line who couldn't really celebrate the way they deserved. Uh, this is what an incomplete keyword search uh, query would look like. Um, just you know, obviously getting three languages here uh, out of uh, 100 plus. Um, and um, even so, even if we included all the languages uh, and all the nuances in a huge query, what if someone used a slightly different set of words? Like, what if there's a typo in the tweet? Like, we, we can't really uh, get to that resolution with just keywords. And, you know, can you imagine how big the search query has to be really to capture uh, the full conversation in many languages across the world? Um, so how do we make an API aware of its surrounding context in this case? I think artificial intelligence can help here, um, natural language processing in particular. Platforms invested significant efforts into AI, including ourselves in the past few years, aiming their efforts to help things like internal processes or uh, uh, content moderations. But we seem to be in a fairly mature stage to see useful applications that can be opened up to the broader developer ecosystem as well. And one way to achieve contextual awareness is by annotating text through named entity recognition. So we can uh, you know, map text to things like names and places. Uh, so even if they're not the same language, we know that these tweets are about the same topic, a holiday called Mother's Day. And we can start then representing things like you know, tweets, not just in the form of keywords or hashtags, but in the form of entities. In a health-oriented design, these three tweets share the same annotations. So they're all about a holiday, uh, which is the domain uh, of the, those entities. And there's a specific entity being discussed here, Mother's Day. So we can use entities to get tweets about the specific context we're looking for. If um, in a, a legacy world, uh, we would use uh, a huge search query, keywords, uh, hashtags, and leave these conversations uh, largely incomplete. We can shift from this to just specify what context and entity we want to extract from a conversation, and then let the AI and let natural language processing do that in uh, all the possible languages uh, we have. Uh, the real power and uh, the reason this works well 
is because named entity recognition is aware of the surrounding context for a, a particular piece of information. Uh, so let's take the switch, for example. Tigers will be back in San Francisco playing against the Giants. This might sound familiar uh, to most of you, maybe, but uh, uh, not to me. I'm European, so I have you know a limited knowledge of American sports. Uh, the recognized entities here uh, are exactly the Detroit Tigers and the San Francisco Giants. Uh, those are AI detected. Uh, note that San Francisco, in this case, uh, is not an entity. Uh, this is because we're to not talking about the city of San Francisco, but because we are talking about a team based in San Francisco. Um, so now I know we're talking about you know sports teams, fine. But exactly what sports? Um, you know, this is uh, exactly the problem with the lack of contextual awareness. Um, and um, we have uh, uh, enabled uh, annotations in our uh, experimental API program called Tour Developer Labs. And we uh, basically can give uh, people out uh, this um, information as they look for tweets. So they can have, um, they can expand the knowledge of about the tweets to the surrounding context. And if you run actually a, a tweet like this through the Labs API, uh, you also have the domain. So we're talking about sports team of baseball, precisely MLB, Major, major League uh, Baseball specifically. So you can understand uh, how uh, these two things uh, work in, uh, uh, in conjunction together. Uh, there are a few things here also to, uh, to note. Uh, for example, uh, the work that's been done for uh, um, things like uh, the... Uh, Health of the pipe conversation in a way that really uh, measure the impact of uh, current events, and uh, this is one thing that um, we're trying to look more towards as we shape the future with the new Twitter API as well, which uh, uh, we just uh, recently announced. So uh, we have basically a twofold strategy here. Uh, that you're going to see more and more in the future to design for uh, health. Uh, first, we give developers the tools to better understand the public conversation. And all you saw so far, like I said, is available right now in the, the Twitter Developer Labs API and will be available very, very soon in the new uh, Twitter Developer Lab, uh, Twitter, uh, Twitter API we just announced. And second, we'll give developers better tools so they can uh, help the users have uh, more uh, of uh, a better experience online that can limit the amount of uh, content they uh, don't find useful or they may find downright, downright uh, irrelevant or uh, you know abusive. An example of this strategy is what we launched um, as soon as the pandemic started, uh, the COVID-19 stream endpoint. Um, this API uh, gives developers a real-time stream of tweets about this topic. COVID-19 uh, based on uh, annotations, just like uh, we saw before. So making this uh, access um, is uh, something that's uh, you know, kind of unprecedented in our story because it's all for free. So you have basically what we can um, detect being um, COVID-19 related tweets for free. Uh, and we give the full, res the full resolution of the conversation. So 100% of what we can detect about COVID-19 out for research and developers and no profit use cases. Um, and I think, again, this is one of the most valuable things I've seen uh, um, in uh, the company as the world comes together to you know, protect our communities and seek answers to pressing challenges. Um, this stream serves, uh, again, a real-time data set of all tweets we can detect uh, filtered by the COVID-19 context annotation. So those are you know, context aware tweets. This API only returns those tweets. Um, and um, basically, developers just have to uh, use the full data sets to enable things uh, um, that they might find useful for the greater good. So this, is, this API is obviously you know, built thinking of health. In the legacy world, you will need uh, access to the data sets. And then you will set up uh, the right keywords, get the best possible uh, corpus to use as a training model for uh, your uh, entity recognition models. And there's, um, yeah, you know, there's obviously some entity recognition API in the marketplace, but they're not trained on the data set of tweets. So you have to build your own. 
it's not easy to get access to this data and it's not easy to process this data. Um, so instead, in a health-oriented world that we're going to see uh, in uh, 2020 and beyond, we just have an integrated API that gives all this for you. So you don't have to divert your efforts from uh, you know, computing power to reading a paper, implementing TensorFlow models, uh, or uh, using a third-party API. You just have everything in one place and it's trained in the best possible way by first-party uh, ML and AI. Uh, so there's no doubt that you know, an health-oriented design like this uh, enables a better developer experience, which in turn can have positive implications in the ecosystem. Uh, with one single endpoint, this is just a single endpoint, um, developers are now able to research the spread of the disease, understand the spread of misinformation, and build solutions for uh, things like crisis management, emergency response, or communications with, uh, communication with communities. Uh, but also, like they can also further develop machine learning and data tools, um, and you know who knows what what else the developer community and the research community can come up with. So again, uh, better understanding from one side and uh, better tools to improve to make the public conversation better. Uh, so we touched on the, the first better understanding. How about the second? We think obviously everybody should feel safe and comfortable sharing their thoughts on uh, the internet. Sometimes uh, people might receive replies that are irrelevant, off topic, uh, abusive. Uh, they might find it difficult or even possible to prevent these problems. So it's not ideal for the platform and it's not ideal for people using the platform. You know? So last year we added a way to hide replies to a conversation and people started to hide replies for uh, many reasons. They see the benefit of doing that uh, for, uh, you know, Maybe to include uh, um, com removing comments that are abusive or irrelevant uh, or distracting to make the conversation stay on topic. Uh, you know, like post um, on only post uh, only accept replies from people who reply with a meme or an you know uh, or an image or a video. Um, and so, while many people want the benefit of hiding replies to improve the quality of their conversation. Um, some people receive such a large number of replies that it's difficult or even like overwhelming to do so without help. Additionally, some people might want help uh, to hide replies uh, that contain offensive or abusive language because they want to limit exposure to that language, obviously. Uh, so even when you have the tools, they might not have the time, um, the uh, energy or the emotional fortitude to deal with all this. And this is where a health-oriented design can help. Um, when an API platform has tools to solve this problem at scales, the developer naturally uh, will step in and help users uh, have a better, safer experience. There's such a great overlap between like the, a developer's mission of serving their own users and our own mission to serve the, the, our own users that it's natural that um, we've seen interest throughout the years and uh, this is only going to increase uh, in uh, from, from now on. We, uh, an example, of public-oriented API to improve the public conversation is the High Replies API. And with this API, developers can uh, build tools to help people high replies to their tweets uh, in uh, you know, faster ways or more efficiently, or even in circumstances where they normally give up. Um, and it's an API that increases participation in uh, the public conversation. So in, if we use this API, a user can delegate hiding replies to an app based on the criteria the app itself defined. So for example, you can tweet as usual. Uh, then behind the scenes, one thing that you can implement as an app, uh, maybe you can integrate with an API that checks uh, for replies in real time. Um, and then can, the app can check for uh, uh, you know some criteria. Maybe uh, you can uh, define uh, some um, keywords you want to allow or deny. Uh, you can uh, still plug natural language processing to uh, you know, keep replies uh, in topic um, and uh, detect topics, again, for uh, to understand what the tweet is about and understand whether or not to hide the reply. And then you hide or uh, hide the reply accordingly based on uh, uh, what uh, the criteria are. And uh, we've seen this with uh, uh, good success in the marketplace as well. Uh, an example of this uh, is uh, the Perspective API from Jigsaw. Uh, Jigsaw is a unit within Google. They have an API called Perspective uh, that uses machine learning models to score the perceived impact a comment might have on a conversation. So basically, developers and publishers can, 
use this uh, AI to get a score from a comment to help moderators do their job or to readers to you know more easily find relevant information. So if you run, say, you know, a text through the Perspective API, the Perspective API gives you um, an uh, understanding of how toxic or abusive the, the text uh, might, uh, might be. And if there's um, a, highly, uh, a high likelihood of this context to be um, abusive, you may trigger the high replies or to hide a tweet. It's that simple, really. Um, and as a matter of fact, we uh, have an API integration uh, on uh, the high reply side. So you can just uh, um, use our uh, getting started templates and uh, expand on uh, this kind of boilerplate yourself. And that works in, uh, in real time. So when you enable experiences like these, um, end users are not the only to benefit, obviously. Like I said, it's a problem for, for the platform and a problem for users. So it's a, kind of a win-win you know, situation when we start to tackle this problem together. And um, in, that happens so that in, um, an ecosystem can be created uh, with uh, apps that can even cooperate together uh, to embed into the main experience. So you have these apps on the side that can watch uh, your replies as you tweet, uh, and you can trust those uh, those apps that uh, uh, they man the they replies are managed for you, um, and uh, you can always uh, have control and and hide replies and go back and revert those actions if needed. So the legacy world saw users rely on themselves to improve the main online experiences with results we you know we've seen and. This could also be challenging for internal processes as well. Like, what if we have uh, a lot of uh, user reports and we have to deal with all of them? Um, what if we just, you know, don't go to the root of the problem and make sure that uh, developers can be in control of their experiences uh, by limiting the content they have to witness that's not relevant to them? Um, so, in a health-oriented world, uh, developers uh, will be contributing more and more actively to the main user experiences. Uh, you know, in the legacy world, we have lack of scalability, but in a health-oriented design, developers are going to help users uh, make the best possible choice for their needs. Developers uh, help scale the efforts of the platform, and the API will not just an API to, you know, read things, but it will be an API to contribute, to mutate, to even integrate more and more deeply into the main experience in, uh, like, kind of blurring the lines between uh, what uh, a developer app is and what the main experience is even. And it's going to be an advanced ecosystem because of all this. So this is the two-fold strategy, and this is basically the strategy we have for uh, the future of the Twitter API, giving better tools for better understanding and uh, better tools to action their under the understanding of developers. And with that, you know, developers all over the world can uh, create an advanced ecosystem that respects and improves uh, everyone's experience online. Uh, this is all I had. Uh, thank you. I uh, I hope there were uh, questions, um, but if not, uh, uh, you can uh, actually test all this right now. Um, this link will get you to the Twitter Developer Labs program, which you can access for free. Um, and uh, if you have any questions or you have anything uh, interesting uh, built for the public conversation, just let us know, uh, even directly to me. I'll be more than happy to you know uh, further the conversation. Yeah, thank you very much, Daniele. Uh, uh, one question about, uh, uh, and and please respond to the level where you can respond, right? Uh, but yeah, but but you know the let's say the, the discussion on the on on the web like has been really in the debates in the last weeks. Uh, how we can use actually the tools that you were providing uh, to like uh, you know being able to enable this safer safer discussion model into your applications? What advice would could you give to developers? Yeah, so I think the future is going to be uh, more and more oriented towards uh, uh, kind of these two areas. Um, you know, when we're going to see um, artificial intelligence, and you know, we, we don't have to just use like uh, our first part artificial intelligence. Like you can train uh, models based on the particular sub conversations or particular topics and contexts, um, and uh, that's exactly where. Uh, you know, people can contribute to uh, making these experiences better, even in their own apps. Like an example of this, uh, 
one thing we have is um, a, you know, a product called Topics. And Topics are basically uh, things you can follow based on categories that are detected uh, from uh, specific tweets in specific language. So we train our, uh, our um, AI on our own tweets, obviously. And we can detect with uh, reasonable confidence if a tweet is talking about you know, uh, painting, cats, sports, uh, drawing of cats, sometimes it gets very accurate in, uh, in, in certain languages. But there are things like, you know, the explore tab, uh, when you have all the news, uh, only certain markets have that. And for uh, certain others, we don't even have the context on, you know, what's good to surface. And I think in that case, when we turn to developers, we have developers who have uh, a strong foothold of the, um, you know, of a market in terms of even the culture and the language of the market. If you think of languages, that, you know, the countries like India uh, with a lot of languages and a lot of uh, subtext to all those languages, like we're never going to have, we're never going to be big enough to uh, be able to tap into each single one of those. But we, we want to, you know, we want developers to participate to that and opening up that, that process will be a great um, thing that we actually, uh, you know, would like to explore more and more as we further our progress on uh, the new API platform. So I think another aspect of that is that bringing the developers closer to the app and making sure that they can enable experiences on behalf of uh, a platform. Last question uh, that the community want, uh, want me to ask is about uh, uh, last year we've seen that Twitter was hiring an API policy manager, right? So today, to your maximum of your knowledge, how uh, what can you say to the developer community about uh, the, let's say, the term of service management uh, of the new Twitter? Yep. So we were actually, um, not, not too long ago, we actually made uh, progress in updating our API policy. Uh, we're obviously very aware of the developer feedback and we, we started, I think, January 2019, at least like it's more, more than a year and a half, I think, uh, like on this listening tour to developers, not just current developers, but developers who actually uh, didn't use the Twitter uh, API platform because of the new uh, terms. And we know there's a lot of, uh, uh, you know, not so good sentiments, understatements. Uh, around that so we started to listen and uh we're going to uh open up the platform to uh you know ways that weren't really so clear or even possible before and we're starting to demonstrate that with things like uh, academic research uh now there's uh, uh you know we upgraded the the policy to make sure that uh, academics will have uh, a specific context within which operates uh in safety and uh in compliance of our policy uh, so we're actively working on making this kind of things uh, clearer and clearer and making sure that, you know, even consumer developers, which is a segment uh, we sadly uh, kind of, you know, overlooked in the past few years, can feel comfortable and see it, especially like see the value of Twitter as a, you know, distribution platform as they try to uh, get more, uh, um, you know, users into their apps. I think we can be of help and, you um, there's there's going to be others uh, other areas that we we never seen before. So yes, the you know in terms of API policy, it's going to be um, that's my personal take, like more allowing. That's you know the trend I've seen uh, from uh, the time I joined uh, to the to, to the present days. And uh, if I can see into like you know the next six to twelve months, there's going to be more and more. Uh, so we're actually working on uh, making sure that developers can feel can feel more and more comfortable. The if, if there's any feedback, please, please, please uh, let us know. Uh, I'm here to like, you know, be interested, not interesting. So um, I would more than uh, uh, I, I would be more than happy to just uh, lead those conversations and uh, connect people and developers to the right uh, areas of uh, Twitter. We want to have like a closer relationship, the, the closest possible relationship within the developers and the company. And we're pretty much like building in the open. Even our roadmap is public now. Uh, so if there's anything we can do to uh, you know, get your feedback, it's going to be like extremely appreciated. Yeah, thank you very much, Daniela. And every time you will want to uh, have a, a sane, trustworthy, and transparent relationship with developers, you can count on API days to help us uh, uh, build a relationship like we do with all the companies who, who are in that, in that mindset. Thank you very much, Daniela. Thank you. Thank you to the community. Yeah, thank you. And uh, yeah, see you at probably another API days event. Yeah. Yes, bye.